The Little Manistee is probably my favorite canoeing river. Probably half my paddling of all the canoe trips I do, probably half of them are on the Little Manistee at one place or another. I like the thrills and chills of the uh, six to nine mile bridge span, which I don't recommend for beginners. But I like these early spans, these upper spans, quite a bit. I've done two videos, maybe three, at least two videos on the upper Little Manistee above this spot. I'm at Indian Bridge, um, state forest, I believe, takes care of this place. Indian Bridge Access Point on Irons Road or Peacock Road. And um, I've done a stretch above here. Most people don't do that stretch. Like I said, I got two videos on that. There's a lot of obstacles. You can expect at least a dozen obstacles to uh, portage around in some fashion. This stretch down from here is done pretty commonly. But you can still expect a few little portages. You can also expect some shallow spots that won't, uh, canoe can't go through. So there's a, probably about four spots or so, give or take a couple, where you're going to have to get out of your canoe and drag it. But of course, as you know, without your weight in the canoe, it doesn't really drag, you know, it floats. But you just got to walk it through some real shallow, wide sections that will get a little wider than this. And you can see the water gets shallow fast. I'll be able to float this with no problem. Uh, new to this section below me here, you used to have to go all the way down to DeWitt Road Bridge, which is like a f three, four, five hour trip. And most of it's through areas where there's houses. You know, last two or three hours is through a long stretch of houses on the riverbanks. And you used to not be able to, there's one road that cuts off in between here. You used to not be able to get off there. There wasn't any access at that bridge. Well, now there is access there. And the name of the road escapes me at the moment. Maybe I'll put it in the comments or ask me if you want to know. But you can now split this section in half and not go all the way to DeWitt. You can get off at um, the major bridge ahead there. And... Um, uh, it's not Johnson Bridge, I don't believe. After what? I'm not sure. I don't want to say the wrong bridge. So I'll be able to do the uh, nice half of this trip, which is the wild, very, very few houses in this section, up to that first bridge. I'll also go under the uh, Pierre Marquette Railroad on this stretch. And I'll probably talk about that when I get there. What well, used to be the Pierre Marquette Railroad.
This old bridge used to carry the railroad, the Pierre Marquette Railroad line. And this uh, line is what made Dublin and um, Wellston towns, really, because they were both the stops in the railroad. A lot of this trail has been preserved. A lot of the uh, this railroad line was preserved as rail trails, but not up to here. I don't know if this section ever will be. The section all the way to uh, Wellston went for sale a few years ago. I think a, some private owner bought it. This also means you're coming to the end of the wildest stretch of this river. After here, you'll start seeing houses pop up more and more frequently. And after we cross the next major bridge road, um, it's where the road does a big corner. And anyway, it's a major bridge. It used to be no access. There's a new access point there. But after we get there, I probably won't film after that because it's all just houses pretty much. I'll have a nice, uh, I'll have to make up some time too. A lot, of, a lot of canoeing through that section. It's not bad, it's nice fast water. Um, just houses on the side of it all the way down, pretty much. A few little breaks. <laughs> 